In lesson six, seven, we are going to continue with partial quotients, part two. So this will be very similar to our lesson six, four, when you were introduced to partial quotients. You will need your whiteboard, whiteboard marker, your math journal, and let's go ahead and start warming up on our whiteboard. What you see here is how much is six sevens worth? So think of this as just another way to say six times seven. So when you see these brackets, it just means take seven six times. So go ahead and number one, two, and three. So again, it just means how much would six sevens be worth? Six times seven is 42. Go ahead and complete number two and three, and pause your video. Again, six times seven is 42, and add on one zero, 420. Six sevens is 42. Add your two zeros on in the end to get 4,200. Go ahead and erase your whiteboard, and let's number one to three again. This time, how much would 780s be worth? So think of it as what is seven times 80? Would you continue with one, two, and three? Pause your video and write your answer on your whiteboard. 780s would be 560. How many would 70 80s be? Well, seven times eight is still 56, and one, two zeros to follow, 5,600. How much would 780s be worth? Seven times eight is 56, and I count up one, two, three zeros, one, two, three zeros, 56,000. And one last warm up. You notice how important multiplication facts have been over the course of these last two units. So if you're still working on them, continue. And lastly, what would 30 80s be worth? 380s and 3080s. Again, think of it as 30 times 80. Go ahead and pause your video. Don't just let it keep playing until you have the answers. 30 80s is worth 2,400. 3 times 8 is still 24 and 1, 2, 3 zeros, 1, 2, 3 zeros, 24,000. And 8 times 3 is 24 and 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then count your numbers to put in your commas, 240,000. Now, just going back to remembering how to divide using partial quotients, this math message says Lillian needs to buy 112 bottles of water for the school party. The bottles come in packs of four. How many packs should she buy? So let's go ahead on your whiteboard and set up 112 bottles. I'm gonna divide that by groups of four. And I would say to myself, can I buy at least 10 groups of four? Absolutely, because 10 times four would be 40. I still have quite a few water bottles to buy, so how about can I do 20 groups of four? Well, 20 times four is 80. I can do that. Go ahead and write that below the 112, lining it up carefully. Go ahead and subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2. 11 minus 8 is 3. Can I buy 10 more groups of 4? Well, 10 times 4 would be 40, and guess what? I only need to purchase 32 more, so now it becomes a basic fact. How many 4s are there in 32? If you know your facts, you would say eight. Eight times four is 32. Go ahead and subtract. We'll add those two numbers together. She needs to buy 28 
packs. And if you ever wanted to check it, you would say, okay, if she bought 28 packs of water and there's four in a pack, she should end up with 112. Eight times four is 32, carry your three. Two, four times two is eight, plus three is 11. I'm back to where I started. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into our math journal at this time. Go ahead and open to journal page 206. 206. The directions read estimate. Write a number model to represent the problem, then use partial quotients to solve. Number one, there are 184 plants to put into pots. Each pot can hold eight plants. How many pots are needed? Well, to make this a uh, problem I can do in my head, I'm going to estimate and say it's closest to 200 plants and then I'll go ahead and round up eight to 10. This one I can do in my head. This zero cancels out this zero. 20 divided by one is 20. So if I go ahead and say 200 divided by 10 gives me 20 pots, my answer should be close to 20. Now we're going to go ahead and solve. On the number model with the unknown, go ahead and write 184 divided by eight equals, and I'll just go ahead and put X to represent the plants. Now you can decide to solve um, on another sheet of paper if you want more room, or you're going to have to write small, put 184 divided by eight plants in each pot. I'll say to myself, can I put at least 10 groups of eight. Well, 10 times eight would be 80. I'm gonna go the next 10. Could I do 20 groups of eight? Well, in your head, 20 times eight would be 160. So absolutely. Go ahead and subtract. And I say to myself, can I do 10 more groups of eight? Well, 10 times eight is 80. Nope, I only have 24 left, so now it becomes a basic fact. How many eights are there in 24? You know those multiplication facts. There are three eights in 24. Eight times three is 24. Go ahead and subtract. Add those two numbers together on the side. 20 plus 3 is 23 pots. Are there any pots left over? Well, right here? No, there are not. So there are zero plants left over. So that number divided evenly. Number two. Carpenters are installing hinges. They have 371 screw, screws. Each hinge needs three screws. How many hinges can they install? Well, I'm gonna change 371 to 360, and I'm gonna divide that by three, because I know my 12s, because I know that 36 divided by three gives me 12, and then I just move that zero over, so I know that my answer should be close to 120 hinges. I'm gonna go ahead and write the number model with the unknown. So we know there are 371 screws. We're gonna divide that by the three screws that are needed for each hinge. And I'm gonna put H for hinge. So over on the side, I'm gonna take 371 and divide it by three. I'm gonna to say to myself, are there at least 10 groups of three? 10 times three is 30. Oh my, and I have 371. I'm gonna jump way up. How about 80 groups of three? Sure, I could do 80 groups of three. Let's just start there. 80 times three would be 240.
Can I do 80 more groups? Well, no, because I only have 131 screws left. So how about 40? Could I do 40 groups of three? Absolutely. 40 times three is 120. Go ahead and subtract. One minus zero is one. Three minus two is one. Make sure you're doing this with me. Be honest and make sure that you are doing what is expected of you. All right, can I do 10 more groups of three? Well, no, that would be 30. So now I would have to say how many groups of three are left if I have 11 screws? Well, three times three would be nine. Three times four would be 12. So I can only do three more groups. And three times three is nine. I'm left with two. Can I make another group? No, I cannot. So I'm gonna to add together these numbers on the side. 80 plus 43, if you need to add it like this, you surely can. The answer would be 123 hinges. Now, are there any screws left over? Yes, there are. Not every number divides evenly. So there'll be two screws left over in case one gets wrecked or something. All right, let's continue down the page. Actually, we won't worry about number three at this time. We're going to move on to page 207. Again, we're going to estimate a waiter distributed 1,325 drinking straws evenly among nine dispensers. How many straws went in each dispenser? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take 1,000, make that 300, and round 9 to 10. This zero cancels out this one. 130 divided by 1 is 130 straws per dispenser. Now I'll go ahead and write the actual number, 1,325, divided by 9 equals, and I'll put S for straws. This one's going to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to work over along the side of my page a little bit more. I'm going to take 1,000. 325 and divide it by 9. Now I want to use a larger number here because if I start really small, this problem's going to go all the way down the page. So can I do, let's say, 100 groups of 9? Well, 100 times 9 is 900, so that would work. Go ahead and subtract 900 because you just removed 900 straws and put them into containers. Now I have 425 straws left. Can I do 50 groups? Nine times five is 45 with two zeros, or one zero, excuse me. Nope, that wouldn't work, but I could do 40 groups. Nine times four is 36 with one zero, so that works. Go ahead and subtract. Five minus zero is five. 12 minus six is six. Can I do 10? I have 65 straws left. Okay, so this is, I have 65 straws. Can I do 10 groups? Well, no, it could be because 10 times nine is 90 and I only have 65 left. So now it becomes a basic fact. How many nines are in 65? Well, nothing divides evenly, but I know that nine times seven is 63. Can I make any more groups of nine? No, because all I have left are two straws. So I'm gonna add up the numbers on the side, 100, 
plus 40 plus 7 is 147 straws per dispenser. And how many are left over? Two. Let's do one more problem and then we'll go ahead and finish up this video. Number five, the local movie theater sold $2,496 worth of tickets on Friday night. If each ticket sold cost $8, how many tickets were sold? So I'm gonna estimate 2,496, make that $2,500 divided by, and I'll make this 10, this zero cancels out this zero, and 250 divided by one is 250. So my answer should be close to 250. That will also help me estimate um, how many nines are in 2,496. So let's go ahead and take 2,496 divided by eight, and I'll put T for tickets. Go ahead and divide that by the $8. Now remember, my answer should be close to 250. So when I'm estimating over on the side about how many times eight goes into that number, I should be able to do that pretty close. So let's say, does it go in 200 times? Well, eight times two is 16 with two zeros. Guess what? I'm gonna guess even higher than that. Does it go in there at least 300 times? Well, eight times three is 24 with two zeros. So yes, it does. So I knew that it had to be more than 200. So that helped me with my estimation. Go ahead and subtract. Six minus zero is six. Nine minus zero is nine. You don't have to put those zeros. All right. Are there at least 10 groups of eight? Absolutely. 10 times eight is 80. Go ahead and subtract. Are there 10 more groups of eight? No, but it now becomes a basic fact. How many eights are there in 16? Two. And eight times two is 16. So this one did divide evenly. Out of 300 plus 10 plus two is 312 tickets and zero dollars left over. So you're going to be practicing partial quotients today.